Are black men responsible for the failure and dysfunction of the black family? When you look at the figures from the population census data in which 60% of the family in the black community, which is made up of single mothers raising children without fathers, that tells you that there is a huge failure in the structure of the family. Is this failure and dysfunction of the black family the responsibility of black men? Are black women responsible for the destruction of the black family structure? Are aid from the federal government the reasons for the high rate of black children growing up without the father? How much influence poverty, unemployment and crime in the disintegration of the black family? Are the topic that we will analyze in this work. Many social workers and family therapists at first impression conclude that the failure Destruction and dysfunction in the black family both black women and men share the same levels of responsibility. Such a conclusion does not explain the reasons for this deterioration of the black family right now, compared to three or four decades in the past, when the black family was much more integrated and the proportion of black family marriages reached the figure of about 60% compared to the current figure of around 39% according to the latest figures. Are black men really responsible for the decline in marriages in the black community? Are black men the reason for the dysfunction and problems that exist in many black families? Are black men responsible for the destruction of the black family structure? There are several factors to analyze to find the answer to these questions. Number 1 increase in poverty. Some analysts of human behavior, when looking at the levels of poverty, unemployment, and low wages, might conclude that this is one of the reasons why many African American men don't enter into a marriage relationship because of the enormous financial responsibility that such a decision implies. What are the reasons for the poverty levels in the black community? What is the reason behind many black men not committing to a marital relationship or getting married? To know these answers we must analyze the change in the attitude that some black men have when we talk about marriage or the creation of a family. Is unemployment and poverty the reason for the decline in black marriages? I differed a little on that conclusion when we looked at other factors such as cultural and social factors that are behind this problem when we talk about the decline in married couples in the black community. There is no doubt that having a good job or good economic stability is an element to consider when you enter into a long-term marital relationship. Is the increase in poverty and lack of good employment the reason for this low marriage in the black community? From my point of view it is not the main one. Culturally, Marriage is a type of marital relationship which is associated with the traditions of a given community. Reasons why, poverty levels were not sufficient reasons to stop this tradition. Could the change in black women's attitudes regarding the traditional role of women in marriage be the reason for this decline in marriages in the black community? Some modern black women with a masculine mentality don't want to assume a submissive attitude towards their husband. Many seek equality as head of the household, decision-making, household chores, and enjoying the same freedoms that some married men enjoy. Number 2. Poor Educational System Many analysts of human behavior consider that the educational level can influence the individual's ability to have a stable marital relationship, and more, when we talk about Western societies, where the ability to produce capital and have a good job are factors to consider, and more when we grow up with the idea that money is important for the stability of a marriage, sometimes more than the emotional stability of people. In the years before the implementation of civil rights laws and the right to a good education, not to mention the affirmative action policy which guaranteed blacks a good education, there was a decrease in the percentage of married couples in the black community which breaks the myth that a good education increases marriages in the black community, on the contrary, it produced an increase in the divorce curve, negatively affecting the black family structure. Some might say that an increase in the level of education, plus an increase in marriage equality between men and women, produced the opposite effect in the black community, because it produced an imbalance between professionals and blue-collar workers, 
in terms of the amount of money that each of them could contribute in marriage in a capitalist society. Whoever contributes more money tends to consider that he or she is in a higher hierarchical position, which positions him or her as head of the family who makes the final decision. Ideas of possession or power struggle in a marital relationship, which breaks the role that the man should have in a traditional marriage, where the woman, even if she earns more than the man, must assume a position of submission in the marriage compared to the man. The decrease in marriages is not a product of the low educational level of blacks, it is rather a change in attitudes associated with marriage, where cultural changes and individual expectations is something that must be taken into account at the moment, when defining who is in a power role and who has a submissive role, and the role that money or the ability to produce it plays in this power struggle in modern marriages. Where marriage roles are undefined or intermingled without a sense of direction or family structure. This is where the educational level of individuals involved in a family structure is a factor to consider when choosing a partner. Is the low educational level of black men the reason for the deterioration of family structure in the black community? When you analyze the census data and the relationship that exists between the level of education and percentages of marriage, you reach the conclusion that the educational level, more than helping to increase marriages, tends to produce a decrease in the formation of lasting marital relationships in the long term. For some reason when a black man earns a lot of money in some cases, they tend to look for a partner outside of his racial group which lowers the marriage levels within the black community. An individual does not look for a partner for racial or cultural homogeneity, but rather taking into account the social level, economic executive position within a company. Right now there is a high percentage of black women with a higher education degree compared to black men, which creates one more challenge for black women with a college degree, when choosing to marry a black man with less education than her and they make less money. The educational level and the capacity to produce capital in both black men and women, whether one wants to accept it or not, has changed the dynamics in the black family, but it has also changed the role that parents play based on the educational level, but also in the ability to produce money, which translates into more power for those with a higher educational level, but also a well-paid job. When a family structure is determined by economic values, not by family values or social traditions, it results in the abandonment of traditional marriages, Number 3, Black Men Raised by Single Mothers I have always believed that people are the product of the social environment in which they grow up, which is why people who grow up in dysfunctional homes often tend to transfer the dysfunction in which they grew up to a new marital relationship. This is where studying this phenomenon in the black community should be the priority of black leaders, social workers and family counselors as a way to break with this dysfunctional behavior that is affecting the structure of black families. Many young black boys and girls who grew up in parentless homes, high levels of poverty, parental emotional problems, marital conflict, parental neglect, no family protection, raised by grandparents, children of young parents tend to have children as well. Without parents. You should expect them to repeat the same parameters of dysfunctional and harmful behaviors learned from single mothers. It is a family circle that is never broken unless the boys or girls of single mothers know the reason behind this type of behavior, which is passed down from mother to daughter as normal parenting behavior. When a young man is raised by a single mother, he does not learn to know the role he should play in a healthy marital relationship due to the lack of a father figure in the home, who teaches by example what the role of the husband in the home is, but above all what is the role of a father. This black man who grows up without a father sometimes tends to produce children without a father, although in some cases these young black men, when they are parents tend to overprotect their children as a way of compensating for the fact that they did not grow up without a father. This behavior is not part of the majority but of the minority who tend to produce the opposite behavior in which they grew up. Many of these young black people who grow up without parents tend to exaggerate about the best way to raise children, producing parents, 
who become permissive and overprotective of their children, who without realizing it are falling into a dysfunctional relationship with their children, because they look at the children as the center of attention of the family structure, where the importance of the mother is never taken into account and the father transfers that emotional void to the children. Black youth, who grow up without parents, when they have children of their own, they try to give these children what they never received from their parents. Number 4. How much influence federal aid policy for single mother in the destruction of family structure in the black community? When a person becomes a parent, every dollar counts, especially if they are alone. Single mothers not only have to cover all their family expenses with a single salary, but they also tend to work more shifts than normal, thus losing quality time with their children. Fortunately, there are several programs in the United States that provide financial help for low-income single mothers. Some analysts consider that these government assistance programs for single mothers encourage this type of single parent family that we all know, but also do not force black men to assume responsibility for the economic support, housing, and feeding of black children. No one doubts that federal aid to single mothers is a way to reduce poverty levels, guarantee food and maintain a single parent family structure in which around 58% of black children grow up in families without a father. What are the federal financial aid programs for low-income single mothers? We have to talk about federal tax credits, temporary assistance for needy families, special supplemental nutrition program for women, infants, and children, WIC, and the food stamp program, SNAP. SNAP recipients receive a monthly money transfer that they can use through an EBT card, known as an electronic benefit transfer card. Some politicians of the American extreme right are against this type of federal aid to those who are below the poverty level, because in the past it was argued that such aid is only an incentive to drug use, the disintegration of the family and dissociate responsibility of black fathers in the upbringing and support of children. On the contrary, many liberal activists seek the increase and expansion of federal aid programs, the American government offers financial assistance to single mothers in different ways through a wide variety of social programs that include food delivery, housing, child care and student scholarships. Many single mothers qualify for Medicaid health care. Medicaid is low-cost or zero-cost health insurance that is provided by every state in the country. Why do some black single mothers use this type of federal help? Everyone knows that many single mothers are the product of not having an educational level regarding the use of means to avoid pregnancy, especially young girls without work or earning a minimum wage. Giving nursing age children the correct nutrition and care which is not possible, something that he or she can provide without public assistance from the federal government. This is where the disintegration of the black family results in young girls having children without the financial support of the father, who in many cases is unemployed or works for a minimum wage, perpetuating poverty in the black community. Number 5. High Incarceration of Black Men Prison System No one doubts that the high number of black men incarcerated in federal prisons as a result of high sentences in comparison with the white prison population as a result of the consumption, sale and distribution of drugs, especially crack cocaine, which was more addictive than other forms of cocaine. As a result of this increase in the black population in the federal prison system during the last few decades, the proportion of marriages without parents, single black mothers, and also as a consequence an increase in black boys and girls who grow up without a father increased as well. Is the high concentration of black men in federal prisons and criminal records the reason for the decline of the black family structure? It could be one of the reasons, but not the main one. We must analyze the reasons behind the enormous number of blacks in prison to determine if there is a correlation between the increase of blacks in the federal prison system and the deterioration of the black family. Some have the idea that the deterioration of the black family structure resulted in an increase in crime in the black community, 
which resulted in an increase in the black population in federal prisons. What was the reason for the increase in criminal acts associated with drug use, juvenile delinquency, black killing other blacks, robberies, assaults, and destruction of businesses in poor black neighborhoods? This is where, institutional racism especially in the judicial system, poor education, high unemployment, black family disintegration, drug use and the negative effects of black subculture could be the reason behind the high number of the black population in the federal prison. A boy or girl who grows up without a father as an adult is more likely to be in prison than a boy or girl of the same age with a stable family structure. From my point of view, both black women and black men are equally responsible for the deterioration and destruction of the structure of the black family. Until both assume this responsibility, we will have dysfunctional families in the black community. Millions of black children growing up without parents, increased poverty, low education, living in poor neighborhoods, victims of crime and above all, without the hope of breaking the cycle of violence and dysfunction that surrounds growing up in a black family in the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, if you like this type of video, Please subscribe to this channel and leave your comments.